do the explanation in English while uh, all the all the French geologists are there speaking French. We now landed at uh, Lac Boisvert, which is just south of the Sherlock Corridor. Uh, our camp is 500 meters away from here. Uh, you'll have a beautiful lunch there. Uh, and then those guys just had some nice fish, so I'm hoping they'll give us the fish for lunch. <laughs> but uh, then uh, all the access road, like basically you can drive here from Montreal, no problems. That road uh, is fully connected. You don't have any weird, fancy things to do. Um, and we have another camp all the way to the south there. Uh, that other camp is uh, mostly used for logging, for core cutting. Uh, it's a much bigger camp. Uh, all our storage, everything is set up there. And then uh, Sherlock, what you'll see right now is the main corridor that we are working at the moment. Then Nasigon, uh, you'll see more in the afternoon. And we stopped working on Nasigon a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, the drill rig and everything came uh, here. And we are now waiting for the essays from Nasigon before we go back there uh, later in this year. And I saw it in the presentation deck something about trenching in July and August. Are all the res any results from that out? All the results, where are we? So uh, trenching, we read some. We had some dr trenching results came out uh, from uh, Sherlock, Toby, and from Nasigon. Uh, there are more trenches that are being completed at the moment, and uh, we recently published a picture on uh, on LinkedIn, and uh, soon on the, will appear on our website a trench on the elementary zone. And elementary was. Uh, <laughs> A zone that was discovered, as you'll see, by first by a couple of big boulders. Yep. The glaciers dropped it there, and we were like, okay, that must come from somewhere nearby. <laughs> uh, then found one outcrop, yeah. then started a little, little trench. Oh, it's mineralized. Oh, let's uh, keep going. Then at the end of the day, it was a 50 meter long trench. And so, this is the cover. This is the situation we're dealing with here, too. This is the kind of setting. It's, that's uh, very simple for us to work through. Uh, very easy to open a couple of areas for trenching, for drilling. Yeah. You'll see the drilling uh, setups are very easy. Yeah. Uh, very simple t topography. You don't have any ups <laughs> and downs. So uh, very easy operation. And there is outcrop as well. There is outcrop as well. And boulders float, all kinds of interesting things. Boulders, thank you, uh, glaciers. Uh, yes, indeed. For the big boulders. <laughs> uh, most of the outcrop, uh, except for the ones from the boulders, is actually not the mineralized <laughs> marble. Yep. Usually for the marble mineral uh, is uh, weathers down. Yep. So when it weathers down, you will uh, kind of tend to hide that. And what weathers high are the gneissic units, which are not mineralized, but they are part of the sedimentary basin. Path. Search, search, search. Any clues you can get, right? Exactly. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like some float too here. Yeah, those are big boulders. Some of them already came out as uh, part of the excavator work. Uh, some of them are natural. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, Watson 3. And uh, right there is uh, drill hole 3, which is the discovery drill hole, 120 meters of 0.34% copper. Uh, that's the one that was very exciting. Then drill hole four is the next one, so 50 meters apart. Then uh, Sherlock, so one of the drill holes that uh, we are expecting the, the results any minute now. Uh, same mineralization, same extension. So now 50 meters, 50 community. meters, 50 meters, and then the next hole again, another 50 meters. And yet you see the same mineralization continuity. Like same path. thing, same package of anywhere between 60 meters to 120 meters. It's all packages of 10 to 20 meters of uh, very nice grade of 0.4 to 0.8 uh, and even 1% copper uh, and then uh, then because it's kind of interbedded plus folded so then you'll go through a little uh, package of non mineralized material then you get back into the same package wow. and then you get into the same package again <laughs> so if you stretch it over your 120 to 150 meters uh, it's uh, it's a nice uh, nice nice thick package with uh, grade all over it <laughs> So here you'll you'll look right now at a couple of the mineralized intersections uh, from drill hole three and four. Yoo And then your marble is basically plated. Yeah. So look here at the marble. So that's the discovery trench. Sherlock. Mm -hmm. All that's mineralized.
So here you'll see, uh, that's the map of the Sherlock Trench. So here's the late dike that's cross cutting it. It's right that, that brown down there. And then uh, that mineralized package. So you can see meter by meter all the all the samples here. And uh, that entire trench is mineralized. Trying to expand here a little bit, yes. But because the scale is so large, I mean, we are talking of 10 kilometers. We're not about to put drill hole every 50 meters, not at the moment. So we are trying to go, okay. Ex uh, you're showing that it continues over yeah. 200, 300 meters. Exactly. We, we, we show that, or sometimes even 500 meters to a kilometer. Because you won't find that outcropping. You'll find this outcropping. Yeah. Right? And this is not mineralized. So we keep going, and uh, if you have the right soil anomaly yeah. and geochemical uh, so soil and geochemistry yeah. and geophysics, you're like, okay, there's not, there's something here. So the guys start going through the forest traverses, and then they find the boulder or a little outcrop. Oh, there's a little bit of mineralization. Bring the shovel, trench it. If it's this, you keep trenching it. If it's this. You can trench the whole thing and you'll find them all, but you don't need to trench them all, right? Because <laughs> otherwise, you, you're basically going to start uh, doing an open pit right away. <laughs> well, already some clues in terms of where we are and why we're here. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? God, crazy to think you could drive from Montreal to here on a highway. Important. And even crazier to think that there's stuff of interest <laughs> hidden in the woods here mineral exploration what a business look at it look at it it's just you'd be forgiven for looking at that and thinking what <laughs> Trench the whole thing and you'll find them all, but you don't need to trench them all, right? Because <laughs> otherwise, you, you're basically gonna start uh, doing an open pit right away. <laughs> but, uh, Your holes vertical or angle? But this the holes are four, 45 degrees. Yeah. All the holes, you, you're trying to cut everything as much uh, yeah. as, as, as close as possible to uh, kind of perpendicular. And the interesting thing is because structure is kind of moving throughout the unit, yeah. so the true uh, the true width, the, the perpendicularity changes as well. Yep. So uh, yep. here it, here it's very subvertical, and we'll see that in the drill hole that kind of starts turning, and then it kind of turns again, which is fine because in a mine, from a block picture kind of uh, the mineralized block, it's all the same for me. That's right. So we'll drill out. We are trying to get a little bit more control on the structural geology. Uh, Good luck. Exactly. Well, you, you want the structure to kind of follow some of the continuity, but the structural continuity over the large scale of 15 kilometers, 10 kilometers, is not dependent on that structure. So that is a small scale, but on the large scale, the structure is actually simpler. Yep, yep, sure. So to follow the, the actual unit, like where is this relative to the next one, it kind of well, turns and, if you're and it's fine. the whole thing, then the local scale is kind of, and you know, it's academic maybe. <laughs> like this is looking pretty good for a great control in the open pit, <laughs> yes, right? Indeed. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> don't bench. take this guy, <laughs> take this guy. Right? I think I can figure out. <laughs> Which one is mineralized? Two meter benches or whatever blocks. Yeah, yeah so uh, it's very good. And so let, let's look at some mineralization. I know, I see the sparkles are crazy. Right? Well, so the sparkles are your uh, phlogopites. Yeah, uh, you were talking, I haven't heard this word before, ever. So phlogopite is a mica. Uh, yeah, okay. It's, uh, it's those phyllosilicates. Yeah. And they're, they're a good indication for us that there's going to be mineralization when they are within the marble. We actually don't want phlogopite within the, the, the gneissic unit. Yep. But what we want is when we pick up the marble, is that? we want this copper. Whoa. So this is copper oxidation, yeah. copper staining. Yep. If you look with the hand lens, you'll start finding your calcopyrite and boronite crystals. Yep. So you, here you can oh, really? So you, you see all that uh, staining, but it, it hasn't Here's been a little born that crystal, and it hasn't been uh, diluted or taken out with the with the staining or the, the oxidation. It hasn't. No. Uh, so uh, we've done oh. sample uh, uh, testing of uh, very deep channels to see if we can. Uh, yeah. Uh, if 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 the, if the grade on surface is higher than at uh, at depth or uh, in fresh, it's all the same. So the you can see here some boronite, the purple crystal right here. Uh, so 
So it's very important it's a to... big crystal, it looks like. Uh, <laughs> uh, you'll see bigger ones on the next uh, few <laughs> showings. <laughs> so it's very important to understand... Uh, here. Right. Calc pirate and boronite right there. Uh, okay. Nicely disseminated. <laughs> and the dissemination is very important because it's everywhere. Right? Yeah. You don't want it stuck to, uh, in veins because then you have to start hunting for those veins. And you're in a Granville where things are broken and folded. <laughs> yeah. And if you're starting to hunt veins, well, uh, you're doing it wrong, I think. Sorry. <laughs> it's kind of hard. Yep. Uh, there's more uh, calcopyrite staining. So, uh, yeah, malachite yeah. staining. So, malachite is, uh, is an important indica indication for us. Yep. Uh, it was like, okay, break the fresh rock and look for those boronites and calcopyrite crystals. <laughs> uh, but malachite is not carrying the, really the gold. It's just a little bit of surface tinge just to gi give us an indication. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in some outcrops, uh, you won't even have the, the malachite staining. Yep. Uh, you literally have to crack the rock open and then you'll see some calcopyrite and boronite. Great. The other mineral that's present here a lot is calcosite. It's not as present on Sherlock, it's present on some of the other trenches, uh, but in the stratiform copper mineralization is associated with those three minerals, calcopyrite, boronite and calcosite. Yep. Calcosite is the best one, uh, it has up to 80% copper within the mineral structure, really? so you need less of it uh, to get more copper, uh, to get the same amount of copper. Uh, so one of the tests that's uh, that's very popular in South America and we started using it here. So um, when we see this rock and uh, this uh, glimmerite <laughs> and we can break it, put it, uh, put it uh, in a, <laughs> we can put it in the sample bag, put a little bit of HCL in there yeah. and uh, put in a rusty nail. <laughs> Keep it there for 30 seconds, yeah. pull it out and the uh, nail is going to be copper uh, plated. Yeah, sure, that works, yeah. So yeah. when we have that, we know right away that there's calcosite in the system. <laughs> so we know the grade is going to be 1% higher. Oh, crazy. When there isn't, well, we know it's boronite and calcopyrite, but boronite and calcopyrite will not liberate as much copper, so yep. it won't do the copper stain. And but you can see the plating with the eye. Yeah, oh. there is a nail somewhere on one of the other <laughs> trenches. Uh, hopefully, Alain will find the nail. We'll, we'll show, we'll show you. test, I love it. <laughs> uh, it it's, it's because the geo wants to know. It's like I don't see right now. Yeah, I don't want to see. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, well, because if you see uh, if you see boronite and calcopyrite, you know it's mineralized. Yep. But if you don't see calcosite, because it's it's a black mineral. Like good luck seeing a black mineral in this black material. <laughs> so you need a test, and uh, they'll do it every once in a while. And it's like, yep, calcosite. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Kirill. Uh, so it bec uh, yeah, because you don't have the that linearity. So you have the nail. An old rusty yeah. nail, and you're dipping it into this glimmerite, glimmerite of all things. Full, full of, uh, uh, full of uh, calcosite. Now dip, drop some HCl on it. Yeah. <laughs> How many holes? Thank you, thank you. I see it. <laughs> okay, good. No? You got some? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's copper. So, exact. So that's how, apparently, uh, we were told that's a trick from South America from the prospectors there. Nice. So, uh, works for us. No, Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> no, in Quebec. <laughs> That's uh... Wow. So this is all grading around 1% when you put the channel, uh, when you cut the entire channel. Right here. Now it's green and, and, uh, and blue. Oh yeah. It's all uh, copper oxidation. Yeah. It just shows you how much primary uh, uh, fresh mineralization there is in there. So, uh, some of the previous companies after Noranda abandoned this whole area, uh, they came here, they knew there was something, uh, but they spent very little time, they didn't really trench it. So we know that uh, before we, we trenched this thing, uh, there was a little test bit and it came here. <laughs> they missed this. Yeah, they, they missed. missed this and this and How this. did they manage to take, well, uh, okay. Well, you, you, you go with, uh, with luck, uh, yep. kind of yep. like. Okay, because there were some trees there and all that, so you. But you, they didn't you, blast here. It doesn't like. No, no, no. A, a little tra uh, like a uh, couple of guys come and excavate something uh, manually. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's take a uh, sample. No, no, not good enough. And uh, they walked away That's from it. It's not a very good program. Uh, actually, no, sorry. <laughs> it, it was right here. 
Yeah. It was this guy. It was right here. Yeah, so look. They literally missed it. They were a few meters away from mineralization. So is so like this? I see so some stuff broken off no, here. No, that's already our geos. Okay. But you see, like if they were here, they'd probably get two and three and four percent copper in grab samples. <laughs> but they took it from here, one foot away, and it was like ah, oh, point one. No, let's walk away. Oh my god. And they missed it. Because there was IP surveys done, there was magnetics done. Uh, a lot of uh, the companies uh, that came here before, like nobody trenched it, right? Yeah, that's... So wh why would you bring excavators and all that stuff back yep. in the... Like now the access is much better. Back then it was harder. Well, it, trenching's not that hard. You just saws and this and that. Either. No, trenching is basically you bring an excavator oh. and you remove all that earth Okay, that's from... Uh, that's what I was going to ask is what yeah. was the cover here because I see this all exposed now yeah. and I look at it and right. I think wow this rock looks fantastic yeah this it, is very it interesting was, it was roughly covered by well here it's less than a meter coverage yeah all, all of that was rough, roughly less than a meter coverage yeah as you kind of start going towards the well here coverage. yeah that's that's the that's the see, that's one meter a meter oh, and a half yeah there it is yeah. so that's not that bad but it's here, enough to here was make a, it difficult bit to figure mirror, out. So you can strip that God. and that's fine. Yeah. But once you start hitting two meters, three meters, uh, it becomes uh, dangerous to, to really start throwing more and more earth around you. Yeah. Like you don't want to have anything uh, higher than that uh. because then it becomes too tall and some rain and all that and yeah, it can all slide yeah, down again. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. don't want to be, uh, you, you want to, to stick to the norms. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, 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 so it was an undertaking to clear out this area. That's part of trenching, that, yeah. that's trench. The geos find something, yeah. call the excavator, uh, you can hear the excavator right now in the background there. And uh, he comes and just spends a couple of days uh, just clearing the whole thing. Then the geo washes the whole thing. We have a drone that comes, takes a, dig a digital picture of uh, uh, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, not digital, uh, uh, a geo-referenced picture of the entire thing. And actually the picture is taken as a mosaic. There are many, many pictures at, at, the, at a roughly yep. a meter or two meters height. Yep. And the drone is pre-programmed to do the whole thing. So we have a very uh, high resolution picture of the entire uh, trench. So and the, then the saw cut channel samples. Yes, and that's the channel sampling. Those, so, yeah. So those are channel samples. So you cut one, then you cut the other side, and you take out the sample. And you asked me earlier about the, the oxidation. Can it be the, the oxide that's giving the grade? So we actually did trench a, a couple of channels, uh, either on this trench or on the uh, other trench there, Watson. We did the channels very, very deep, so yeah. six inches. So when you take six inches out of the ground, mm -hmm. you cut it in half and you sample the bottom and you sample the top separately. Yep. And you look at the grade. And because it's six inches, there is no, this is not a fractured rock. There is no, uh, you won't find any malachite uh, at six inches already here. And uh, so if there was an enrichment in the grade in the first three inches, you'd yep. see it right away. Yep. And there's none of that. So there are the fresh rock, uh, and the uh, and the surface, uh, the weathered surface. Six inches is fresh. S here, yes. Whoa. In Nevada, no. Of course, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, I mean, look, I worked in West Africa where uh, <laughs> saprolite was 180 meters. <laughs> so uh, we cut through 180 meters in a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this looks like some hard rock in comparison. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. But actually, marble is yeah. very soft. Oh really? So when you drill through marble, oh, God. Uh, the drill rig, <laughs> we did uh, a couple of days of 250 meters plus wow. in a matter of 24 hours. Whoa, so okay. it goes very, very fast. The drillers are very happy. And how long did it take to clear off this area with the surface cover? Like, uh, Honestly, this is a little bit over a day, maybe really? less than a day. I was thinking a week or no, something no, like no, this. No. It's well, so it depends. If you use a small shovel, <laughs> then yes. <laughs> but if you bring a bigger excavator. Yeah. So we kind of adjust. In the beginning, we were using a small uh, shovel, which is very popular to use in the ABTV. TV. Yeah. Uh, uh, then we, here we are like, oh, it's just taking too much time. Yeah. As you said, like uh, yeah. this can take a week. So uh, you put a big shovel, which is easily available. We, we saw all the roads. They easily <laughs> drive up all the way up to here. Yeah. How, yeah. do you, how do you think they built all the all the camps here? <laughs> it wasn't brought on mules. <laughs> they uh, didn't fly that wood in either. <laughs> oh, look at that! One. I know. 
Beautiful. That's a little extensional vein. Yeah. It's forcing all the copper to recrystallize in the vein. And that's one of the enrichment mechanisms that we find. And some areas that you'll see later today, that is more present than just the uh, th uh, two inches here. Yep. Uh, and then that's where we found the 9% grades in, really? the, in those areas. Well, and it's funny to see it so regular there, but then over here it gets kind of yeah. chopped up and stuff. Speak of structural complexity around here, oh boy. So, <laughs> so th there are two different things. There's the folding, yeah. which happened after the sedimentary basin was already in place. And then there is an extra separate event, which is the extensional environment. And the extensional environment brings those scapolite, uh, it's not dikes, they're scapolite. They look kind of like veins, but they're scapolite, recrystal, uh, re re scapolite recrystallization in those, uh, well, I guess it's veins that stretched out. Yeah. So something needs to infill it. Yeah. So it, it gets infilled with those scapolite crystals. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and they are, as as we, uh, what we see right now, they are very good in helping increase the grade in some of the areas. Yeah. Here it just makes a little enrichment, but in some of the er other areas, they really give you a nice kick in the grade. Whoo! Huh. And, oh. and I hear the excavator making noise in the distance. Uh, um, yeah, that's either the excavator or that's the bulldozer. That's, oh, you got uh, a dozer too? Okay. Well, because that's what moves the rig. <laughs> ah, sure. Uh, well, okay, it, interesting. It literally yes. uh, pulls the uh, rig behind it. Yeah. And the bulldozer kind of goes and when it wants to align it, <laughs> it goes and pushes it here, pushes it there, lifts it up. So it's, I mean, the, the operator of that bulldozer is spectacular. I, I, I saw him all yeah. put the drill rig in place and it's like, oh, okay, that's not the right orientation. He's like, no, the problem. <laughs> Comes here, 30, gives it a ni degrees, nice little notch. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Comes here, done. <laughs> uh, I mean, God. they're very good operators. It's, that's important. You don't want to get bogged down in the mud out here for no. a day or a week or anything. No. <laughs> and it's the same company that uh, did drilling for us in the winter. Yeah. It's a brand new drill rig. They, uh, oh, really? Uh, we were the first client uh, for that drill rig. I've came here with 200 hours of operation. And you've kept it, I hope you kept it on site since then, kept it it's busy. It's been on site <laughs> and uh, we are very lucky that uh, right now there is not a big demand for drill rigs. Yeah. So every time uh, uh, every time we ask him, he's like, okay, uh, give us a couple of weeks off or <laughs> right now it's going to be the hunting season. So we are, yeah, we shut are shutting down for a month and a half, kind of, wow. we, we won't be drilling. And uh, as far as we understand, right now their plan is to keep the drill rig here. It's like, why bring it out when they know we'll probably call them back again in November? <laughs> so, uh, no, very, very, very lucky with the drilling uh, contractor that we have. Anything interesting, ox, ox, iron oxide stuff? Uh, that's maybe, a little bit of or? an iron oxide that's coming out from a little bit of pyrite there, but really, yeah. uh, uh, pyrite is not present in the system. Okay. So uh, Noranda, when they did their 2002 IP survey, they came across a very strong IP anomaly just a little bit to the north here. Yeah. And they thought, okay, great, at least finally we found some good scar mineralization <laughs> that come there and saw pirate and pyrotite uh, okay. within <laughs> a gnisic unit, which is totally not what you're looking for yeah, in this car. Yeah, it's a fail. And that was, I was like, okay, we are done here. We are getting out. <laughs> not a single trench. <laughs> Well, I don't blame them. I, I think of a trench, I think of a discrete rectangular shape, like the amount of area you've cleared yeah, here is you actually have above to, and beyond. Yeah, and wait until you see elementary. <laughs> okay, okay. I was shocked with elementary. <laughs> but that's the whole thing. Sometimes there's so much mineralization, you just can't stop. Yeah, well, that's it. You start yeah. peeling it back, yeah. Wonderful. Here they come. Is he going to have the rig behind him? <laughs> All that mica in the ground is safe, but oh, and some quartz and stuff too. Eight like quartz that. veins, not mineralized, not associated with the mineralization. No, it looks like some nice clean bull quartz, just white. No, he's pre no. prepping for uh, drilling. The best of Quebec mining. Yeah. <coughs> Four and, four and a half hours away from Montreal. Yeah. I can leave home uh, at <laughs> five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I'm here before 10. Uh, and yet you still have the field crew who knows what they're doing. Field it's 
that's nice. Part of the part of the team is the same one that uh, was involved with uh, Eleanor all yeah. the way until it got sold. Yeah. Some of the guys are new and very nice uh, team. <laughs> you know what they're doing. I don't have to run after them. <laughs> Wonderful to see some of the folds and things too. You are starting to see foliation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Structural yeah. geology. Luckily, I'm not dependent on all those small folds. <laughs> yes, and as I you have said. to follow them. <laughs> yep. We need to follow that big package. The big one, yeah. And do you have a sense for so, width? Are you tired? So that package, let's say, well, think of it as a, think of a, uh, <laughs> getting my mind, uh, the Great Canyon, uh -huh. right? In the Great Canyon, you have all the interbedded layers, sure. right? Yep. So think of it like this. This used to be a basin, interbedded, yeah. different sediments, limestones, sediment, uh, sandstones, yep. more si uh, yep. limestones. Then it got metamorphosed, started folding and all that stuff. So we are looking for that favorable package, yep. which here we know is predominant over 10 kilometers. Oof. And that unit only in the Charlotte corridor by itself is very visible because it's low magnetic. Yeah. So when the airborne ma uh, magnetic survey was done, yep. it mapped out that 10 to 12 kilometers yep. only in the Sherlock uh, corridor. Yep. It's a, it's a hor it's a horseshoe shape. Yeah. And when we look at that corridor, you're not gonna find right away all all the mineralization. We in the beginning we found Sherlock. Well, the original was Watson it's from 1971 from Noranda. Yeah. Uh, a little drill hole that kind of kept everybody everyone's interest since then. Mm -hmm. Now we found Sherlock. So that just that that's 400 500 years away <laughs> and now we've been slowly plugging holes towards that direction good now we found an extension in this direction for yeah. 200 meters good now another extension in this direction yeah uh, steady steady work then elementary came right here ah, show you a different map that's okay and this is just the <laughs> sherlock corridor i studied the maps a bit and looked around like there's several corridors to look at here what's going on helps to have the geophysics underpinning them that makes sense for me now thank you so here the only thing that's missing uh, is that horseshoe outline I that see, they yep. didn't put yep but you see that's elementary yep that's the horseshoe that was supposed to be going yeah and here. there's watson down there and everything sherlock too, watson yep. 007 <laughs> here we haven't found anything here but it's because we didn't send anybody there yet. <laughs> um but now elementary was those are a couple of grab samples sure that more interesting. Yeah. Send the team there. Find the outcrop. Uh, okay, bring the excavator. Let's get to work now here. Looks, now it's <laughs> now bigger. It it's, like it's, big, it's bigger than. It's this. bigger than this. Yeah, that's good. So to hear. now in between them, we are trying to find a couple of others. Yep. But it takes time to to find it. But we know it's there. So we infield with IP. We infield here with IP. Ah. And IP gives us an indication where are those units. So obviously, if we know now the IP is really close to surface here. Yep. So we just send the team. Uh, with with a little probe, okay, that's shallow, bring the excavator. You start a little uh, pit and you hope you get that. If no, you maybe missed. Yeah. Then you keep working in the same area that's for right. a couple of days until you find it. Yep. So it's next summer, a lot of work will go into completing this because we can't really trench in the winter. Ah, uh, okay. Um, okay. But you can drill in the winter? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Some, uh, some drilling in the winter will, uh, will continue uh, yep. in filling some of those areas where we know we can plug holes. Exactly, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like elementary, no holes yet. No, no holes, but the elementary will be drilled uh, soon. Okay. Uh, yeah, while the drill rig is here, before the hunting season before starts the in the hunting next season. couple of uh, weeks, okay. we want to plug in a couple of holes Great there. plan, great plan. There are a couple of shallow lakes, but it's not really lakes, they're almost ponds, there's not even fish there. Yeah. So all those we want to drill as well during the winter. Okay. You just put the drill rig on the ice, once the ice is thick, yeah, and wonderful. you drill from there. Yeah. It's right, obviously, during the summer, if you drill for towards the lake yeah becomes very deep holes nah. and not the right angle yeah you want to wait until it's frozen go there plug in a couple of holes and Good. that's it so definitely a lot of work for the winter here <laughs> uh nasigon same thing nasigon we didn't get a single essay result yet uh <laughs> geological interpretation is only starting right now but Ooh. you you wait until your results come in before you start putting this stuff together yes and then yeah <laughs> then uh, ispana uh, the there is a team right now on the, uh, working on a couple of uh, trenches. Yep. Uh, I haven't seen any of them. Wonderful. The guys are finding the same units. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how continuous at the moment. So yeah. for now, I can't put a strike length. No. But we definitely see on a, on Sherlock. Uh, we can calculate right now 4.5 kilometers of strike length, Oof. and on Nasigon roughly two kilometers. Oof. Okay. So Those the good place to start. <laughs> you asked me what's the package. 
roughly speaking, you're looking at packages of 10 to 20 meters, sometimes 30 meters, sure. of anywhere between 0.4 and 1%. Okay. So the average grade could be, let's say, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. And this is this looks like maybe 10 if you go from over there to over uh, here. No, so that's the lateral extension. The yeah. width is like this. Yeah, I know. So uh, that's 20 meters. Is it 20? Yeah. Okay. That's sure. 20 meters. Yeah, from I'm trying to eyeball it and wondering how far down the hill slope you go. Yeah, that's 20 meters. Okay. okay. And that drill hole that went uh, yeah, underneath right. here. Yep. You expect uh, based on the previous <laughs> drill hole, which yes. is three which was 120 meters of 0.34. You expect this one to get you another uh, 100 meters or so. Yeah. Uh, and was, did three, the, that hole over there, did that hit at depth? There was some... Uh, hole three, and we'll look at the... Well, because this one's collared in the damn stuff. Excuse me. But yeah, <laughs> exactly. So this one tries, starts right kind of behind it and wants to, right wants to get the, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, then there are a couple of holes from the other directions to try and get the structural control, really see how it's uh, oh, the smart. shape of it. Good, good, uh, good. Cross it. Yeah, that, so yeah. exactly. The cross uh, hole is from there. Uh, there is another hole behind it. Yep. Uh, that was drill hole one yeah. that hit the other structure. So it really uh, went and hit the nice pocket underneath it. And we were like, oh, Ooh, what the hell is going, going on? on here? And that's why you need to get <laughs> an understanding. You know where the mineralization is, but yeah. really what's the shape of it. Oh, that's, and that's why you plug in a couple of holes over the entire cross section. Oh. So now we got hole eight, hole nine, yeah. hole 13, I believe. <laughs> there, it's really... Count them up. <laughs> you, you, you get a good idea. And then now we took it 50 meters uh, to the east. Oh, really? Uh, oh, 50 good. meters to the, yeah, to the east. And then another hole just two days ago got completed, uh, taking it another couple of hundred meters. Ah. So, wow. Okay. And the mineralization well, continues. So, okay. so there you already, you stop kind of trenching every single spot. Sure, and start drilling, yeah. yeah. But for <laughs> Step example, out a bit, yeah. But for example, one original hole, uh, which is a couple of hundred meters north of this uh, Sherlock uh, st stratigraphy, uh, we plugged, we put in one drill hole there. And there was a little bit of an indication, like there should, maybe there's something, maybe no. The hole was just absolutely a beauty. So okay, send the send the send the excavator. Get so we work. so we trenched it. It looked very good. Yeah. So now we want uh, to put a couple of other drill holes there. Yeah. And because the reason it's very important because so okay, so let's say we have a couple uh, 100 to 150 meters of mineralized package here. Yeah. That's good. But now then there is a couple of hundred meters of gap. Yeah. And then the same package reappears. Yeah. So now you can have potentially maybe two parallel zones. Yeah. So if that's 500 600 meters long. Yeah. Now you have two of those. So in the same area you have basically, <laughs> so not only that I have 4.5 kilometers, in a couple of areas it repeats. Yes. And that repetition is very important. Well, and we see it on the map too with the geophysics, these, yep. uh, these horseshoe shapes. You can stack a few horseshoe shapes. In, uh... Yep. So we kind of found it uh, just in the northern portion here. And the previous maps were always saying, us, oh, there's no marble in there. <laughs> oh. They were wrong. <laughs> That's music to my ears. Keep up the good work, Kintavar. Very impressed here about a new type of discovery, the young exploration team. Lots of good things in the mix here. And I encourage you to contact the company directly, yourself. If you still want more, watch this next little clip and some chatter at the core box. High-grade modeling problems for copper deposits. Beauty of calcosite. I thought bornite was good. No, not until you get exposed to calcosite. <laughs> so there's this also one, this one is loaded with grains of calco. What is it? Yeah, <laughs> calco and calco uh, bornite and calcosite. So here you can. The calco part is very easy to, to spot. Yes. If you look with the hand lens, you'll see the bore lens as well. And then that last one meter. Down here at 120? Yeah. Good luck figuring out how that is a 1%. Yeah, from here, from yeah. 119. Like, that's not enough calco par, right? To do 1%. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little, yeah. you've got something circled, see CPBO. Yeah. And there's maybe some other, but. Uh, but then, 
You then analyze it, it comes out at 1%. Then you have ice silver as well. Yep. You have like 5 point, yeah, five six, yeah, right. six yeah. grams on this. So, so, so all this is, the, it's your cocosite playing tricks on you. 